learners today we will be dealing with certificate in food and nutrition cfn1 un your food block 2 unit 6 and unit 7 unit 6 deals with let us choose the right food and unit 7 how healthy are our meal patterns i am your teacher for today dr ankita gupta assistant professor in the discipline of nutritional sciences indira gandhi national open university new delhi we will be covering the following objectives in our today's lecture how do we select the right food in your meals what are the benefits of eating seasonal locally available and inexpensive quality foods we'll be listing the foods which are rich in more than one nutrient we'll use these foods in various food combinations we'll list the variety of foods selected and consumed in the indian subcontinent we'll discuss the nutritional adequacy of vegetarian and non vegetarian diets so before i begin today's lecture i like to take you back to the last unit which we did it was on food groups if you can recall what are the three basic food groups that we studied in the last lecture the three basic food groups were energy giving foods body building foods and protective foods the energy giving foods mainly comprised of cereals and fats the body building foods consisted of proteins sources like pulses milk and milk products meat fish and poultry whereas the protective foods gave us vitamins and minerals and we got these protective foods from mainly fruits and vegetables so this is the basic knowledge on which we'll build our today's lecture so as we all know that food is a basic necessity to survive if we do not eat adequate food our body will not function properly and we'll develop various deficiencies we must eat a mixed diet which has a combination of all the food groups that we studied in the last lecture so our diet should comprise of energy giving foods body building foods and the protective foods in order to remain healthy we must include foods from these three food groups food groups also help us in adding variety to our diet because as we know that energy giving foods like cereals consist of wheat rice barley jowar maize so we can choose we can change the food and add variety to our diet similarly we can change the fruit and vegetable in our diet we can change the pulses in the diet and these will simply add variety and we'll enjoy our meals besides adding nutrients Uh, to our diet there are other factors which help us in choosing the right food so it is not just the nutrient content of the food or the meal which uh, should be the basis for deciding the diet there are various other factors which should be considered when we make the food choices so the first and foremost factor which we should consider while planning the diet of a person or choosing the food is the socio cultural belief and practices of any particular uh, community or any particular religion customs and beliefs have a very important influence on food consumption religious beliefs social customs and the individual likes and dislikes often influence the choice of our food we must discourage harmful beliefs like restriction of certain foods during pregnancy and lactation like there is a myth 
that papaya should not be eaten during pregnancy whereas there is no scientific basis which uh, says so similarly curd should not be had during pregnancy and many other similar superstitions do exist in different communities popular and easily available ready to eat snacks and fast foods are low in the nutritional value so there are various customs and traditions like hindus generally do not eat beef muslims avoid pork so these are the socio cultural beliefs and practices which influence our food choices the second factor which uh, should be considered while choosing the food is seasonal foods seasonal foods are generally high in quality and they are priced low so seasonal foods are available in plenty only during a particular period at the peak season each vegetable and fruit has the highest nutrient content and the best flavor vegetables stored in cold storage when they are not in season or fruits which are preserved by preservatives by canning often lose their flavor to some extent and their price is also high during preservation some loss of nutrients is also seen vegetables like peas cauliflower are cheaper in winter than summers mangoes are less expensive in summers so seasonal foods should be bought and consumed when they are available in plenty so these are some of the seasonal fruits and vegetables which are available in uh, different countries different parts of the country so if you can recall which is the particular season when lady finger is available which is the particular season when apples are available in plenty so uh, i'll just go to the next slide which gives a more detailed account of this so summer season vegetables are lady finger beans cucumber bottle gourd capsicum and in summers the fruits which are available in plenty are mangoes pineapples pears musk melon watermelon these are available in plenty in the winter season however beetroot peas cauliflower carrots radish fenugreek spinach and cabbage are the vegetables which are available in plenty whereas fruits like apples lemons guavas oranges grapes are available in plenty in the winter season so seasonal fruits should be preferred when uh, planning the diet next factor which should be considered while buying food are locally available foods we should eat local because these are more fresh we eat foods which are grown around the place we live in if we eat foods from a place which is situated far away the cost of transportation storage increases the price of these foods you all must have noticed that there are some fruits which are not grown in the native that you stay and these are either imported or these are brought from some other areas and their cost is relatively high than the fruits or the vegetable which are grown locally so this increases the cost of the food including locally available food in the diet ensures better nutrition at a lower cost foods available in a particular area are more popular and acceptable to people living in that area and may be not acceptable to people living in a different part of the country like for example fish is more liked by the people living in the coastal areas of the country or the people living close to the sea coast than the other parts of the country so locally available food is uh, cheaper it is more nutritious and easily available the next factor which should be considered while buying food is inexpensive quality food 
we have a myth that expensive food is of better nutritional value if a food is expensive it is uh, assumed that it will be nutritious whereas it is not so cheap foods are often rich in the nutritional value like ground nuts are equally nutritious as the almonds cereals and pulses can be sprouted or germinated to increase their nutrient content when we germinate the pulses the like uh, the whole pulses then vitamin c and the b complex vitamin content increases fermentation also increases the quality and quantity of nutrient foods rich in quality and quantity are not expensive if we choose them rightly so choosing the right quality and quantity is of utmost importance while buying the food then we should always try to buy food which is rich in more than one nutrient most of the foods are rich in more than one nutrient we should include foods rich in different nutrients to improve the nutritional value of the diet all the foods contain more than one nutrient the amount of nutrient present may vary from food to food we call certain foods nutritious because they contain certain nutrients in the significant amounts cereals besides providing energy are also a good source of protein and b complex vitamins milk is called the complete food since it provides all nutrients except iron and vitamin c animal foods like eggs meat fish and poultry provide protein vitamin a and b complex fruits and vegetables are good sources of minerals and vitamins sugars and fats mainly provide energy next i'll be showing you a table in which the nutrients in edible portion of common foods is given so this is just for your reference you don't need to learn this but this table clearly shows that one food product has more than one nutrient and we should try to consume foods which are rich in more than one nutrient next we'll talk about combination of foods what are food combination a combination of cereal and pulse improves the quality of protein in the meal some south indian preparations like dosas idli khichdi missi roti etc are examples of cereal pulse combination combination of cereals with vegetables is also nutritious addition of vegetable increases the vitamin and mineral content of the meal example vegetable stuffed parathas tomato sandwiches including several foods in order to eat a wholesome meal so cereal and fats give energy pulses and milk give protein vegetable and fruits provide minerals and vitamins therefore combining different foods in one meal gives us a complete set of proteins or essential amino acids therefore we should try and have a combination of cereal and pulse protein or cereal and vegetable protein or cereal and milk protein in each of our meals so this is also a factor which should be kept in mind while buying the food next we move to the next unit which says how healthy are our meal patterns our country has an economy which is based majorly on agriculture there has been an increase in the production of food grain over the past few decades but the steep increase in population has offset the balance steep increase in population has offset the balance there is uh, there is agricultural production but uh, proportionately the population size has also grown grown very large so those population 
need food grains need food to eat and grow the nutritional status of a population is a reflection of their food consumption pattern if they eat a healthy diet they will be uh, better nourished they will be free from diseases whereas if the population does not get enough food to eat would be malnutrition deficiency diseases rampant in the population cereals or millets form the staple food in the indian diets commonly consumed ones are wheat rice jowar bajra ragi maize and barley besides cereals pulses are also consumed largely in the indian household like bengal gram red gram black gram green gram and lentils are part of the indian household a variety of green leafy vegetables roots and tubers and fruits are available in india milk is also an important food stuff consumed in india milk is converted into various products like buttermilk butter ghee cheese khoa malai etc india is one of the largest producer of oil seeds groundnut sesame mustard oil and coconut oil are included in the indian diet in a number of ways spices and condiments like chilies pepper cardamom cloves cumin and mustard are also consumed in the indian houses almost every day let us now move to the meal pattern the meal pattern in india or around the world is largely either vegetarian or non vegetarian vegetarian dietary pattern consist of cereals pulses milk and its products fruits and vegetables why do people choose to be vegetarian religion and cultural sentiments forbid many people from eating foods of animal origin which often requires slaughter of animals whereas non vegetarian dietary pattern consist of meat fish poultry etc religion often forbids the consumption of flesh foods on certain days occasions and festivals so apart from the vegetarian and non vegetarian diets vegan is another term which you must have heard lately so a vegan diet is something which does not include any milk product even so they are kind of pure vegetarians they only survive on foods which are derived from the plant sources but vegetarian diets include uh, milk and milk products along with the plant products a wide difference exists between the dietary pattern of the poor and the affluent classes the diet of poor population are predominantly made up of cereals with very little intake of other protein rich foods or vitamin and minerals like pulses seasonal fruits and vegetables because poor people don't have enough money to buy um these uh, protective or body building foods which are uh, compared uh, comparatively expensive than the energy giving foods so the difference in dietary pattern also exists between the rural and the urban population so the dietary pattern differs between the poor and the affluent class as well as between the rural and the urban population rural people who are mainly engaged in agricultural activities they have a better intake of seasonal foods seasonal uh, foods which are grown in their fields uh, they their intake is better whereas a uh, poor urban population which mainly consists of the industrial labor mostly consume inadequate diets with improvement in the economic status urban population has a tendency to spend more on clothes and entertainment than on foods this you all must be uh, party to it because uh, as uh, young children as young uh, adolescents you all must have always preferred to buy some cloth 
or uh, watch a movie rather than buying some healthy food and eating. I think you all would agree that you never prefer having a salad or eat, buying a fruit when you have some extra pocket money. You um, prefer to buy some cola, some burger or uh, some other fast food when you have a have some extra money with you. So even when money is spent on food, it is spent mostly on refined and prestigious foods than on protective foods. So uh, this is the condition that we uh, see uh, in day to day life. Uh, next we talk about nutritional adequacy of our diets. Uh, how adequate are our diets? Pure vegetarians can be well nourished if the diet includes foods from all the basic food groups thus providing sufficient energy and other essential nutrients. So it is not necessary that a vegetarian person would be deficient in some nutrient. A vegetarian person can include foods from all the three groups and he can be well nourished and healthy. In fact, uh, it is often seen that vegetarians have better work performance and endurance as compared to meat eaters. A well balanced vegetarian diet has nutritional benefits such as a slim trim body and a tendency towards lower serum cholesterol. Whereas western non-vegetarian uh, diet has an excess of proteins and fats which is associated with degenerative diseases of the heart, kidney and colon. So uh, in the western population there is a very high incidence of heart disease, kidney disease and uh, cancer of the colon. The Indian dietary pattern has roughage in fairly good amounts. Therefore, incidence of colon cancer is also quite low in our country. Increased purchasing power, increased consumption of fast foods which is high in calories has led to obesity in adults and the children. Diet of poor population mainly consists of cereals and lacks the foods which are rich in proteins, vitamins and minerals. Apart from this, poor purchasing power, large family size and lack of education are the main reasons for diet being nutritionally inadequate. Malnutrition and undernutrition are widely prevalent among the low income groups. Deficiency diseases like protein energy malnutrition, anemia and vitamin A deficiency are the major nutritional problems. Diet of people can be improved by using food combination, sprouting and fermentation. Now let us sum up today's lecture. How do we choose the right food? We should consider seasonal foods, locally available foods, inexpensive quality foods, foodstuffs rich in more than one nutrient and combination of foods should be considered. Cereals are the staple foods supplemented by pulses, milk and its products, seasonal fruits and vegetable. If sufficient food from all the three basic food groups is consumed, the vegetarian diet will not only be nutritionally adequate but will be suitable for highly active individuals like athletes, runners, bicyclists and laborers as well. Majority of the Indian population is poor. Their dietary patterns are nutritionally inadequate. The diet consists mostly of cereals and negligible amount of other foods. Therefore, there is a need to educate these people on the importance of eating a mixed diet consisting of variety of foods which can be either vegetarian or non-vegetarian. So this was all about today's lecture. Thank you for your patient hearing.